Now, Drew Brees, Super Bowl champ, 20 years, absolute legend, 13-time Pro Bowler. You know, I was looking, Drew, I was looking at this. You completed, this is so insane, you completed 74.4% of passes one year. And I just, I look at that and I just, I laugh. And I think to myself, a lot of that is pre-snap, that you literally, you, you kind of mastered it. It was a master class, because you'd be the first to admit, you could, you're not going to thread a ball in your last couple years in the league into little tiny windows. You knew pre-snap what was going on. And I watch all these young quarterbacks, and I don't remember the young Drew. I just remember the great veteran Drew, it feels like to me. Do you remember as a young quarterback, Drew, when you felt like, oh, I've seen every coverage. This is slowing down. Was it year four, five? When did it slow down a little for you? Well, it's, uh, I know this. Uh, I mean, it took me probably three years uh, in the NFL as a starter before I really felt um, comfortable, before I really felt like um, I was kind of, you know, getting used to, you know, all that the NFL entailed and all that the quarterback position the NFL entailed. You know, so it wasn't until year four that we really had a ton of, I think, success, consistent success, you know, for me and, and as an offense. Um, I think that quarterbacks coming in nowadays are so much further ahead from the perspective of, you know, what they've been exposed to uh, up to this point, the amount of football they've played in high school, all the sevens on, all the seven on seven stuff. You know, there's so much crossover between college and NFL coaches and systems now. So there's things that, you know, college defenses will copy from what the NFL is doing, you know? And so they, they just, they've seen and been exposed to so much more. So I feel like they're, they're, they're just that much more ready when they step into the NFL. But at the same time, um, I think you, you bring up the, the completion percentage or just overall efficiency of the passing game thing. That is the one thing about college football that, I don't think prepares guys as well. And, 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 and that is, you know, all these offenses in college are like, get the ball out of your hand quickly. Yes. RPO, yep. you know, we're just, you know, this fast pace, just like bang, bang. Like you don't really see guys going through progressions and, 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 and that's what is required at the NFL level. And very few guys have that coming in as young players that, that, is the thing that typically takes the most time is that comfort level of truly maybe getting to your fourth or fifth progression, but having to do that right. like this, you know, where, man, sometimes you almost have to eliminate one and two because the coverage dictated that. Right? Yeah. And that's that pre-snap thing that you're talking about. Pre-snap, you know, oh, I'm going to eliminate one, two. Now I'm the three, four, five, you know, and that's a hard, that's a hard thing to do. You, you don't see many guys being able to do that. And, and that, that certainly takes time, but, but that to me is what really separates guys as they, as they begin to, to mature and, and develop. And that is your ability to find completions when nobody's open <laughs> or find completions before you're sp- and, 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 and like, Avoiding negative plays, being a problem solver, yeah. is the biggest responsibility of a quarterback. There's two quarterbacks. Uh, I said this about Justin Herbert. He reminds me of Andrew Luck without the recklessness. Is that I get the size and the mobility, wonderful arm, Pac-12 kid, super smart kid, right? He's like a 4-2 biology major. I know he's bright. but and, I, and I'm not knocking a Wentz or an Andrew Luck who are a little more reckless. Hey, man, you do what you got to do. Play the game you got to play. But I watch Herbert, and what strikes me, Drew, is he has a big arm, but he doesn't show it off, and he's got a big body, but nobody slides earlier before getting hit. And that's judgment to me. That's maturity. Maybe it's the college snaps. But what do you see with Herbert? Because I I see a little bit of Andrew Luck there. Yeah, he's a – I mean, you talk about a guy who has absolutely all the traits – uh, physically and, and all the intangibles, um, like I, that, that throw right there, that throw did not get enough love last night, uh, on the broadcast, in my opinion, because if you watch the coverage on what that last throw was, there was a corner that trapped that he felt that you, you could see his eyes in the replay right here, seeing where the safety was. And he felt like the safety is not where he's supposed to be in kind of this deep half or this, 
this coverage that they're playing where that corner is going to trap and now that safety becomes responsible for that for that go route outside. He's like, he's not in the right place. I'm going to rip this thing into what we call the turkey hole <laughs> out there on the <laughs> sideline. And because he's got such a strong arm, it just effortlessly rips it out there to Mike Williams and that ends up being the game winner. Yep. But like, that was, I love that. And that showed a level of maturity and understanding of the offense too, which again, remember that's my offense, right? That's Joe Lombardi, my quarterback coach for, you know, 15 years of the saints. Who's now the OC in uh, with the rant or with the uh, chargers. So I know that system. I knew the play um, <laughs> as he was going through his progression. Um, but, but yeah, he, he's, he's mature beyond his years. Um, man, he's very poised and composed. Um, he's got all the athletic ability in the world. But what really impressed me last night was how he took off and ran for about five first downs in yeah. that game. Uh, you know, you could see him going to a check down and all of a sudden the linebacker peeled on the check down and, oh, now I got to take off and run. But just that clock in his head. I mean, th those things typically are just reserved for guys in their fourth, fifth year. I mean, this guy's, this guy's got it. And he's not just bailing out of the pocket to bail out of the pocket. I mean, he's going through these progressions methodically and then oh nothing's there all right go make something good happen the other quarterback so about three weeks ago there was all these discussions and stories about well the, the eagles have three picks are going to get a quarterback and i told joy i said can we slow this down a little i said all i know when i watch jalen hurts is they're putting up a lot of points and he extends a lot of drives it's possible he's just different he doesn't throw a beautiful deep ball well not everybody does and I watch him, and I watched him yesterday, and I'm like, that's a real Saints defense with a really good defensive coordinator. And I know he doesn't throw it deep, Drew, but all I know, he's hard to cage. He escaped drives. He picks up first. He didn't turn it over. It's a different style. It's a little smaller than I'd love. But, again, they time of possession. What do you make of Jalen Hurts? What am I seeing? Yeah, listen, I was impressed, really impressed with the way he played yesterday. Um, I could see what the Saints game plan was. I haven't gone and watched the, the coach's copy uh, yet of that game. I will. Um, but uh, just from watching it on TV yesterday, um, it certainly felt like the Saints game plan. And credit to D Dennis Allen, he does this. With a mobile quarterback, the way they rush is different. They rush him to keep him inside the pocket. Yeah. You know, so those, 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 those ends, you know, Cameron Jordan, you know, Marcus Davenport, like they're not just kind of like bending this edge to try to get to him because if he steps up and, and escapes the pocket, man, that's, that's not good. Right. Cause you got guys covering downfield and he's going to take off and run for 20 or 30. So you could tell at times they, they were just, man, keep him in the pocket, keep him in the pocket yeah. because Jalen hurts and that offense, he's not a rhythm progression passer. He's a, we're going to run the ball. We're going to RPO. We're going to read option. And Oh, here comes the play action shot. Right. But it's not, this catch go through progression one to two to three. That's not, that's not what they do. That's not really what he does, but what he did yesterday was when nobody, when no one was open on the play action stuff or when they were trying to keep in the pocket, he found ways to still extend plays, maybe find a completion or at least avoid a negative play. Yes. And in so many cases, that's what, yep. that's what, that's what the quarterback needs to do. Just avoid the negative play, avoid the bad thing from happening, avoid getting impatient and trying to force the ball in there and then turning it over. So he he played outstanding yesterday. And then when he did have the chance to, you know, make plays in some of the RPA, I mean, the last run he made was insane, right? Like slams on the brakes, you know, ma makes the end miss and then goes and runs for, you know, 30 to, to, to seal the win. That was, that just showed his, his level of playmaking ability. You know, it's interesting, Drew, you had so many great years. You're going to be Thanksgiving honored, uh, the Bill Saints game, which is going to be a really emotional time for you. You didn't have a lot of lean years uh, in New Orleans, but there was a time when you had, a, I think, a couple of seven and nine, seven and nine. And, you know, critics and the media and fans, uh, they love their emotion. And right now, Baker's going through a patch where he's beat up. The local media is crushing him. He didn't do a press conference. You can't turn on the radio in Cleveland. And you're there's attacking you. And, again, your, your down years in New Orleans were really brief. But what, what would you recommend to a young quarterback? It could be a two in Miami. It could be Baker. The media's on you. The fans are on you. You can hear it. How did you stay focused and just get – because it's impossible these days. It's on your phones. Your friends text you. How, was it hard for you in that brief time when things weren't going well and you weren't winning big? 
Yeah. So I'd say this, you know, first off it, it man, it's tough, right? It, it's tough because we're in a results uh, driven business. Right. And even sometimes when you're winning, everyone wants to focus on the things that, you know, the statistics that are important to them, <laughs> but that, <laughs> then they're trying to make important for you. But at the end of the day, who cares? We found a way to win the game. Right. And I think so much as a young quarterback, each and every day, each and every week is about your own personal growth and development. And that comes at different stages. And there are a lot of circumstances that surround you that can affect that as well. Um, man, like Baker's left shoulder is messed up right now. Yes. I mean, did you see the two, the, the, you know, attempting to make the tackle? When was that like, you know, six weeks ago, was it Arizona maybe when he first looked like he separated it and then the way he fell against whoever that was. I mean, that was that like, I'm sure his left shoulder, I watched him throw when he came back the, the next game. And I could tell like, that is not his throwing motion, right? His left arm is not doing what it should be doing to. So I'm sure he's had to compensate and do certain things that are probably affecting him at the same time. The dude's trying to gut it out, man. He's trying to grit it out for his team. Now I know this too. Like when I look at the Browns, the Browns win with the run game. Yes. Like when Nick Chubb is healthy, when they're running football, that's how that team wins right now. And and their defense has played well at times and other times they haven't, you know? So listen, for, for, for Baker and, and I think just for any young quarterback, again, you mentioned to a um, man, you're going to have your growing pains. Um, there's a way to win each and every week. And it's your job to put your team in the best position to win based on that game plan. And sometimes that means you're going to be handed it off 50 times. And you just have to make a couple of those key third down yep. conversions, whether it's throwing the ball or taking off and running, but, but, you know, taking care of the football, doing that. And the stats may not look good. And sometimes you may have to throw it away four or five times. And, you know, that shows up as, as bad quarterback <laughs> rating, but you know what? It might, might've been the, it might've been the best decisions you made in the game was throwing the ball away. Right. So don't worry about what any of these people say that have no idea what they're talking about. Just go out there and find a way to win for your team and show grit and toughness. And man, that's how you win the team over, and that's how you win games. By the way, how do you feel when you wake up this morning? Now that you're not, at, you're not, you're not playing games. How do you feel after 20 years in the NFL, Drew? You know, it, it, it's funny. Um, like I, I, I've had my moments this off season where my body's probably felt as bad as it ever has, and and I kind of notched that up to you know when you're when you're playing the game, when you're in the moment. Like you have a focus, you have a purpose, something that you're always training for, right? And I think a lot of NFL guys would tell you this, like the moment the season ends, like their bodies kill them for a period of time. And it's because they're no longer coming to work every day, thinking about what they're training for. But also there's like this mental block, like you don't allow yourself to feel certain things because you can't. You're like, man, I got to get to Sunday. I got to find a way to get out there and, and play and be effective. and and, and do this for my team. And so I can't, I can't feel the pain, so to speak, you know? And so when I was no longer playing football and kind of no longer had that mental block, <laughs> it's like, ah, my foot hurts. God, my wrist hurts. God, my shoulder hurts. God, yeah, all these things hurt, you know? Um, but I think a lot of that too, is just, you know, staying active, staying competitive, you know, always waking up with, with something to train for or something to work towards. So that has a lot to do with it. Remarkable family. Uh, can't wait for Thursday and Bills, Saints, and, and all the stuff you're going to be dealing with here on Thanksgiving and your remarkable career. By the way, hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.